Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And in this video, what we are looking at here is this new base by Dan Steff. It's called Orcus Patera. I think I'm pronouncing that right. A pretty cool base on Mars. You can see it has uh, quite a few 3D structures. There's a lot of development, developmental effort that went into making this base. And I've yet to uh, come to it and land. So I thought I would uh, give that a try in sort of a fly with me style video. So uh, let me switch camera views here. And uh, by the way, I hope you like the new uh, overlay that I made. I think it's pretty cool looking. So let's switch views. And let's get inside of our vessel that we're going to be using. I'm going to be taking the XR2 down from Howl Base. And we'll uh, try to get over there to Orcus. Patera, if I'm pronouncing that right. One thing that's kind of cool, I was noticed this the other day, when you look through the canopy or you look through the cockpit uh, view of the XR2, you, really, you get a sense of scale. A lot of times in Orbiter, the vessels kind of, you know, they don't, they, there's really no sense of scale. It's hard to appreciate how large this stuff is unless you see, you know, a UMMU standing next to it or something. And then, you know, the UMMUs are so small, but kind of when you're looking like that in an external view, you just can't really appreciate, you know, how big this stuff really is. You have to kind of zoom in and get way down on the ground like that. And then you can kind of get an idea. But I noticed, like I said the other day, when I put the aero freighter here next to the XR2 at Hal Base, that you get a really good sense of what it, uh, of how big that thing is. Okay, now let's uh, switch views to the uh, larger MFD so that we can see what we're doing better. And what we need to do, um, we're going to do this kind of like the HAL base to uh, Olympus flight, but there are some things that have to be done differently because uh, just for the fact that, uh, you know, the uh, we're not going to be able to do a runway landing. That's a rather... Yeah, yeah, we're not going to do a runway landing or... Uh, actually, I guess I didn't do the runway landing at Olympus either, but at any rate, we'll see what we can do to figure this out. So we got the base targeted. We also need to target Phobos so that we can get an idea of where Phobos is at in its orbit around Mars. And we need to leave Phobos when... When Phobos is basically on the opposite side of the planet from from Olympus, but there's one thing we have to take into consideration, and that's the fact that Mars will rotate in the time that it takes us to go from Phobos to, uh, in this case, Orcus Patra. So instead of just simply being six squares over, we want to be not quite that. So let me. Let me re-remember this. We want to be six squares over from where the base will be at in two hours. And Mars moves about 15 degrees per hour, so that's 30 degrees. That's one full square. And each one of these squares is uh, 30 degrees. So let's think about this. And the time it takes us to go from Phobos down to the uh, atmosphere of Mars, this base will... Uh, as far as map MFD is concerned, it will have moved from here to here. So that means we want to be six squares over from there when we leave Phobos. One, two, three, four, uh, 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 five, six. So basically here, I think I'm doing that right. Let's fast forward time until Phobos is in that position. Ooh, almost overdid it. Time warp gets away from you if you're not careful. Okay, now let's think about this for just a moment. We are at 126 degrees west. Mars is rotating that way, so, you know, from here to here. So that's going to go from there to there. So let's count that. One, two, three, four, five, 
six. Yes, that's right. That's where it will be in two hours. Okay. Now let's uh, load up Transex. There's actually a way to do this with IMFD, a more efficient way, but I actually don't know how to do that yet. So we'll use uh, the Transex method, which is still pretty good in my opinion. Seems pretty good for this. So, uh, uh, what is that? Advanced on, auto plan off, and that's just so that we can get to the uh, plan type. And I believe it's through point. I actually, yes, I actually remembered. So through point and then plan encounter. VW over to the encounter view. And actually, actually while you're in setup, it is also a good idea for me at least to change that graph projection because when I see the graph projection all warped and sideways, it just messes with my head. So VW over to encounter. Now we want to set up Uh, actually, we don't need to set up a maneuver. There's no point. What we actually just want to do is lift up off the landing pad here at uh, at Hal Base, and then when we do our burn, we will just watch the minimum altitude and the off-plane distance. And the off-plane distance in this case is very low already, so we need um, basically we really don't need any. Uh, plane change in our burn that small amount of that small amount of plane difference we could no doubt take care of just in, in gliding i would imagine all right well that's it that's the planning stage that's easy that's about as easy as it gets so let's uh change views over here so we can look at our stuff see what we need to do the landing gears down radiators open so we need to open the uh, hover doors and do we need any more fuel? I don't think so, but let's check uh, B burn time calculator real quick just to see what it says we have. Yeah, we've got plenty of fuel. I don't even have to put in the RCS. All right, Transex. So let's uh, turn on the APU. Like that new cooler APU sound that Video Space Effects made. Okay, I'm getting used to it now, and I like it. It's smooth, it's quiet. Rotation. So go to rotation. Again, we need to open the uh, hover doors. It's not necessarily a bad idea to open the uh, retro doors in case you need to back up or something, but we'll leave them closed. I think we can manage to do things correctly. And let's turn off external cooling. Using onboard O2. It's probably the first time I've remembered to do that in a long time. And retrogrades right there, so we'll just need to lift up, and we're basically facing the correct direction already. Uh, orbit set to Mars. Let's do this. Wheels up. Gear up. Whoa! I think I actually may have clipped the wing of the. Gear up and locked. That's all the hover we need. It almost looked like I clipped the wing. I checked that because it was so close, but I thought that the XR2 was back far enough, but maybe not. Might need to turn the aero freighter the other direction in this scenario. Okay, hover doors are closed. Come back over to uh, orbit HUD. I think we can turn the APU off now. Get rotated to the correct orientation again there's a little bit of plane change here but it's so slight that we don't really need to worry about it what I can do though is bank a pitch up slightly and it probably only needs to be it probably only needs to be two degrees or so very very little bank Okay, and before I do the burn, let me just check. And now the off-plane distance is actually down to 146, so we're... Okay, here we go with the burn, and all I'm going to need to watch is the minimum altitude, basically. I'm pitched the wrong direction, what do you know? Actually, I might not have been... Um, just the fact that I'm slowing down, I believe, changes the off-plane distance. Oh, 
almost overshot the minimum altitude there. Translation. And a little bit more. It's good to have the minimum altitude down at least to 40 kilometers, if not a bit lower than that even. That'll work. Okay, that's it for that burn. So let's now work time forward and get down to get down to Mars. Take a look at uh, Phobos there as it's pulling away from us because it is now traveling faster than we are. Bit of time warp here. Be a little careful with the time warp because we're only going forward by two hours. It's really easy to uh, get carried away and overshoot that. Coming around the lit up side, so we'll be landing during the day. Check the uh, altitude real quick, 450 kilometers. Let's uh, go to target, no orbit. And let's go forward a little bit farther, then we'll close the radiator. And we're arriving 2,000, about 2,000 kilometers right in front of the base. That's pretty good. Have no problem there with the uh, with the glide. Okay, probably about 150 kilometers is a good eye is a good time to uh, close the radiator. Actually, we're going forward significantly farther, so e slowing down in time could be an issue. Yeah, now I'm a little concerned that I left too late. That's not a lot of time to slow down. We'll see if we can make it work, though. Turn on the APU. Rotation. Switch to rotation. We'll throw out the air brake. Hit. Turn surface controls on. Close the radiator. Slide my joystick over here in front so I can see. Or rather, so I have it for use. Let me just check something real quick. Okay. Just was testing the landing gear because, again, my buttons, sometimes they don't map. And then I go to use them later and find out that they're off for some reason. Uh, we'll go ahead and leave the APU running. There's no need to uh, close it, I don't think, or turn it off. Only a thousand kilometers to go. Eesh. And uh, Transex does this thing where it forgets the base that you're using, but if you retarget it, then it has it up there again. We're only 163 meters off from the base. I'll bring up arrow brake if I can find it. And the base name is Orcus Patera. I have to look that up on Google to see what that means or if it means anything at all. 900 kilometers to the base. A little concerned again that I didn't leave enough time. Okay, and we need to be banking the other way. Let's turn off. RCS off. Eight hundred kilometers to go. We won't need a lot of bank angle here because we've only got a difference of uh, you know one hundred and sixty kilometers, I believe it was. To make this work, I might actually have to go out past the base and come back in. That will be not good because. Turning on Mars is really slow. Mark 20. If I can get deep enough into the atmosphere soon without obviously overheating, then we'll be able to slow down enough that uh, turning in 
toward the base wouldn't be a big deal, but the timing here isn't right. It needs to, I need to work that out a little better. Yeah, we're only 500 kilometers from the base and we're still... traveling at a very big, a very large clip. And we're only down to 45 kilometers. Hmm. So we needed to have the base, we needed to have it more, it needed to have more time to rotate around. Well, this might be interesting at least to see what kind of turning capability I have combined with being able to land. You know, like basically get a big, do a large U-turn here. So I'm going to start setting up for that now. While I'm doing that, let me not get too low. Information. APU fuel 80%. I'm going to load, load to watch how much uh, G force I'm pulling and experiencing here. In fact, I can put that up on the HUD here in a second. I'll have to move my webcam out of the way though. Mock 19. 1.7 G. Two point four, that's a lot, that's too much, let's back off. Two point five, let's I mean it's not too much, it's but it's uncomfortable. What I can do, all right, if I hit display, that puts the load meter up there, but now I've got to move this. Now you can see the G up here in the upper right. And I believe ideally you really didn't want to keep it under three Gs for human flight. over three there for a second because I'm, I'm just trying to pull back so that I can turn around. Mock 15. Without taking, you know, forever to get turned around. Yeah, I don't know. Mock fourteen. Definitely would do this differently starting from the uh starting from Phobos. Uh just needs more time. And again that was just visual, you know, I certainly didn't sit there and do any calculations or anything like that. But if we stay here reasonably close to the base, then doesn't seem to me like it'd be that hard to uh, make this work. Mock 13. For now, I'm going to bring the air brake back in. Probably should have done that sooner. Ooh, watching that G-force. Backing off the uh, controls. Kind of made my 
astronauts sick to their stomachs there for a moment, but that wasn't a prolonged period of high G's, just a couple of seconds of uncomfortable. It's that feeling where you're, you know, when you're on a ride and you just get pushed way down your seat and you can feel your shoulders kind of pushing down against your waist and Mach 12. And, and rides typically have pretty low G. Don't know if I'm going to be able to turn all the way around and get back to the base though because my velocity is already down to 2400. I don't know, the, on map MFD in the lower left it really looks like we're getting a good turn rate except I'm at 4G and that's not good. Let me back off. I wish I had like a uh, a limiter MFD that would, you know, no matter how much I pull back on the joystick it would limit the G to say 3. And then it would like maybe let you do 3.5, but it would at least give you a warning or something. It does look like I'll get turned around though. Maybe climb out a bit. I, I, this would be re really uncomfortable for people though. I mean, we've been pulling over 2.5 G's now for a long time. That would be sickening. Can see Demos out there. Mock ten. Okay, we are technically getting closer to the base now. We're not completely turned around, but we're no longer getting farther away from it. And the G-Force has calmed down a bit. You know, we could actually put our radiator out now because we're down below... Um, I forget the exact number, but... I think it's like 200C if you're below that, or 180C. Mock 9. Wrong button. Three hundred kilometers to go, still traveling at one thousand eight hundred meters a second, so we've definitely got the velocity to get over there. And we're almost turned around. Just a little bit more to go, and then we'll be right on track for the base. Putting in a little bit more up elevator to get that turn to happen more quickly, so that I can go back to level, go back to level flight. And then we'll get to see what this uh, Orcus Patra looks like. You know, as you're coming into it, I'm curious how well the mesh blends in with the Martian uh, texture. A lot of add-ons just, eh, the, the the blending is really bad. I mean, nothing uh, to say bad against the person that made it, just that it's just hard to do. It's a, it's a very, it's very difficult to make a mesh that's reasonably small in file size and still have it blended in well with the surrounding uh, texture. I, I certainly couldn't do it. Okay, pretty much on our way back to the base now, 186 kilometers out, so let's actually get rid of our trim. Put out the air brake, we do need to start slowing things down. Open the hover doors. I 
having a bit of a hard time turning in this last little bit. So let me close the air brake because I'm getting more turn when I have the air brake in. Getting more movement through the atmosphere. Only 125 kilometers to go. That's a bit concerning. Let me get down lower. Should help my turning quite a bit. Oh, I should have turned. I should have tuned in the uh, VOR. I forgot. I needed to do that ahead of time because my hands are too full to do it now. Mock seven. I'm gonna have to pause the simulation. Bring up the spaceports. Orcus Patra, and we want. Erg. We want uh, 126.10. Okay. Get down to 0.1x for a moment while I tune that in. One twenty six ten, and that will be the VOR. Orbiter's been so crash happy on me lately, I don't know what the deal is. See if I can find a safe state. The problem with picking up from a safe state is that you don't know exactly what the state is and you gotta like quickly you you know switch the controls because we're not in space we're gliding through the atmosphere all systems nominal all right this was very recent yeah orbiter's just been ridiculously crash happy on me The uh, vertical speed. Mock six. Oops, forgot to switch the camera views. I don't think I'm going to be able to get over to the base because uh, the planning here just wasn't very good. Mark five. It's really, really hard to turn around on Mars because the atmosphere is just too thin. But let me bring back in the air brake. Information. APU fuel 70%. I thought I might be able to make it work, just due to the way. I should have known better, though. I was. I need to be. I need to be probably 1,500 kilometers at a minimum away from the base by the time I get to, uh, you know, 40 kilometers altitude. Yeah, this just isn't going to work. I mean, the base is close. It's right there. You can see it, but. Oops. Didn't mean to bump the throttle. I 
I guess since I have the fuel, let me see if I can somehow use the rest of the fuel that I do have to get over there. Problem is just getting lined up with the base. It's like I'm flying in a circle around the base because the turn radius is so large. Full up elevator, full up elevator trim. Only takes a trickle of a uh, main engine though to uh, keep your velocity. It's worth noting. So I'm kind of looking down the arrow brake to see if it's, you know, if that turn's going to get me into the base or not. Only 23 kilometers away from the base. It's like so close but so far away. Five thousand. Need much larger wings for Mars. It does look like I'm going to get turned in toward the base. Okay. But I'm going to be so close to it at that point. It's gonna be hard to actually land. And running a little past 30 minutes, so I'll try to wrap this up here in just the next couple minutes. Let's see Demos again. Now you can see down an arrow break though that we are turned into the base. So in theory. In theory, we will have enough turn radius, I guess, if you call it that, while that's turning, I'm going to throw out the retro doors, we'll be needing that soon. Okay, I can see the base in front of me. bank <laughs> this is a ridiculous way to land but it wouldn't be me otherwise would it okay now let's go level And we'll engage the hover hold. Only nine kilometers from the middle of the base. Now we can bring up VOR VTOL. Actually, we still need to tune in the comm nav, which was 126. Uh, yeah, we'll go with that one. Just any pad. Uh, fortunately, we're passing it. It's not too surprising, though. Actually, that's kind of an unrealistic way to look. That's like bending your head back. That's, I don't like that. You know what I should have done? I should have uh, downloaded Surface MFD. I think that's what it's called. No, not Surface MFD. I forget what it's called. There's an MFD that actually shows you what the base looks like uh, from the air. It shows you the landing pads. I was just looking at Video Space Effects' video today that he did on that. It shows you where all the landing pads are at, so you don't have to cheat and do external views. And even using the hat switch beyond like that, or that, or maybe like that, I think is kind of a cheat. Because you just can't turn your head that way realistically. 12 kilometers from the 
center of the pad and we're technically technically going to have to back up. So I'm actually going to transfer some of this fuel. I will go to the external view to show what our situation looks like. I know what it looks like, but just to be able to show on the video, I'm hovering uh, in place and I'm using the retro engines currently to back up. But if you can't really picture what that looks like, I'll show you here in a second. Let me just finish transferring fuel. That's good enough. So hovering in the spot and then you know, backing up. Uh, don't want to back up that much. Okay, six kilometers from the pad. Five, and we're off to the side a bit, so I need to correct for that as well. Rotation. Translation. Rotation. Translation. Rotation. Subsonic. Translation. Rotation. Uh, kill rotate stuck on. I didn't realize that. That's annoying. Okay, definitely not the most elegant landing. Zeroing out. Velocity, we're going to have to move forward a little bit. I'm definitely going to redo this, but not tonight. Translation. All right, Rotation. there we are, we're on track to land, and we've got the fuel for it, but sloppy. So let's take a look at this new base anyway. So that's what it looks like from the outside. And again, the blending's pretty good. You know, it doesn't uh, have any start, like just straight lines where it goes from one to the other. So it's pretty decent, and it has a 3D mesh around, so when you get down onto the landing pad, it actually looks like there's mountains. Let's move forward a bit faster than, than this. That's enough because we still have the weaker. Increase the descent rate quite a bit. And if I can time it just right, then we won't need to re-engage the uh, hover hold. One point five kilometers from the middle of the pad. You are clear to land. Gear down. You thought I was gonna forget the landing gear, didn't you? Translation. Fifteen. Ten. Eight. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. Ooh. Not exactly dead center. <laughs> one. Ten meters. Wheels down. Wheels stop. Eh, 10 meters off, all things considered. Um, yeah, I wanna re I'm want i going to redo that one. That's uh, that's a fun flight coming down from Hal Base. Uh, work out the timing a little better on the next one so that I can come straight into the base. It almost looked to me like I was hitting something, but I can see from the external view that that's not the case. That's one problem I have with simulators in general. The exterior view from the cockpit just it's kind of misleading sometimes it looks like you're hitting stuff when you're not hitting it or you're you think you're higher or you think you're lower as in the case of a prepared flight simulator I'm having a lot of problems landing because I feel like I'm lower than I am 
Okay, so that is a uh, really quick, or well, maybe not so quick, fly with me video. Uh, if you like the video, hit the like button down below. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. If you dislike the video, dislike the video. Check out my Facebook page. I'll put a link uh, in the description down below where you can check that out. And something else I'll mention is that I have a uh, an FAQ of frequently asked questions. I get a lot of questions from people who actually don't know that that exists. Um, so I'm, I should start mentioning at the end of my videos that there is a, an FAQ in my description as well. If you go all the way to the bottom, click on that link, and it's not it's not too long. There's not you know, it's not shouldn't be too boring, but it should help answer a lot of the questions that people ask all the time. So uh, check that out as well. And I will see you in the next video.